Hello everyone, Dr. Olivia Joseph here. And today we are going to talk about a topic that I am really passionate about and that is gut health. Some of you have heard my story because you've read it on my bio or you've heard it at one of my live lectures that this is how I actually came to be a functional medicine practitioner is I dealt with gut issues pretty much my entire life from the age of two or three. And now it almost seems like gut health and leaky gut and SIBO and dysbiosis are becoming the buzzwords and they're not new words. Functional medicine practitioner have been using this languaging since as early as the 70s, but more and more people are studying clinical nutrition, functional medicine, and testing on their own, and this stuff is becoming more common vocabulary. So I do want to speak into what these things really are so you know what the truth is versus just kind of what people are talking about. So what is dysbiosis? Dysbiosis means bad bug overgrowth. What that means is that there is not a proper balance in the gut, in your microbiome, that there's more bad than good. Now, one thing people have used for ages is probiotics. I have videos on probiotics. So many of you know I am pro probiotics, but you, it's, it's a theory to think that you can take enough good bacteria and what that's going to do is then you're going to have more good than bad because probiotics can even feed bad bacteria. Probiotics cannot live within your gut if that gut is not a good home for them, if it's a hostile environment. So when you have dysbiosis, which is a bad bug overgrowth, you have to kill off the bad bugs in order to rebuild the good bugs. And let me explain what that means. So what are bad bugs? Yeast, bacteria, and parasites. Now we all have yeast, bacteria, and parasites in our gut. We have really scary things that live in our gut, but we're supposed to have them in the appropriate balance. See, microbiome has to be in the appropriate balance. The good has to be there and so does the bad. So if you have an overgrowth of yeast, you're going to get that yeast ending up in other places such as the bloodstream or in your mouth as thrush or vaginally as a yeast infection. So yeast isn't bad. We all have it. It's in the gut. But when it overgrows, oftentimes due to antibiotic use or even steroids, steroids make yeast grow and proliferate. Another thing that we have to think about in the gut is bacteria. There's a lot of bacteria in the gut. I have, unfortunately, more times than once, had a bacterial overgrowth in my gut called H. pylori. Well, what does H. pylori cause? Gastric ulcers and stomach cancer. It's the leading cause of these things. Those things are not driven as much by food and diet and lifestyle as they are by this bacteria. So we've got to know what's going on inside because I changed my diet and still had digestive issues because I didn't kill off the bad bacteria, the H. pylori. And it is important that our diet matches our lifestyle and our supplements and our probiotics, but if there's bad bugs, you're going to waste a lot of time and a lot of money and years worth of frustration and chasing symptoms because you're not getting to the real root cause, which could be a bacterial overgrowth. So that brings me to SIBO. What is SIBO? Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. How does one test for SIBO? Not an endoscopy and not a colonoscopy. Because an endoscopy doesn't go into the small intestine and neither does a colonoscopy. So you can test for SIBO two ways. Breath testing, totally non-invasive, breath test. And what you're measuring is methane gas and hydrogen gas. If there is methane gas present, that is gas being produced by a bacteria. It's not your food. It's not the way you're eating. And if you do have an overgrowth of small intestine, if you have a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, this can predispose you to autoimmune disease. It can cause chronic inflammation in the, in the bowel. It can cause belching, gas, indigestion, bloating. So SIBO is common. And what makes it so common is if you don't have a healthy stomach pH or if you don't make enough pancreatic enzymes or if you don't have a gallbladder, 
We consume bacteria and parasites every single day in our food. But when it goes, our saliva produces enzymes and acid, then when it goes into the stomach, that environment has to be loaded with enzymes that the pancreas put there, as well as our stomach is supposed to be very acidic. And when it's alkaline, due to drinking soda, taking antacids, taking Tums, when it's too alkaline, this bacteria and parasite can make it into the small intestine living, and then it attaches to that intestinal wall, creating problems. So another issue there that I mentioned is parasites, right? Parasites are a very real issue. The problem is, is there's really no great way to test for parasites unless you do a stool analysis. But a stool analysis is so valuable because in one foul swoop, you can check the enzymes. You can check the pancreatic enzymes and the gallbladder enzymes. In one foul swoop, you can check for yeast, parasite, and bacteria. You can check the good bacteria, such as probiotics, to see what you need more of of and what you really don't. Are the probiotics even living in your gut or is it such a hostile environment in there that you're not even able to culture them or build them up? These are very important things you can get from a stool analysis. In a stool analysis, you also look at immune cells. You look for things like transglutaminase, which tell you if you're at a higher risk for celiac or if you're getting glutened without even knowing it. I see patients in my practice that are gluten-free, but we see they have high transglutaminase on a stool analysis. Well, what I do then is I order some genetic testing, HLA-DQ test, to see if they're a genetic carrier for celiac disease. You can test negative to celiac disease because you don't have it yet, but yet you can still be a genetic carrier. You can be eating gluten-free and still be getting glutened without you knowing it. So these are this is information that's super valuable from a stool analysis, but there's other ways to test. You can test H. pylori through breath, blood, or a stool analysis. You can test for SIBO, breath, or a stool analysis. But these are not things you find out on an endoscopy or a colonoscopy, yet these are the tests we keep doing to find out what. We keep finding out your, our testing was normal, or uh, yeah, there's some irritation, take this antacid, which can actually make dysbiosis worse. Isn't it frustrating? It's so infuriating. It's constantly chasing symptoms. You can check for inflammation in the bowel by looking at something called calprotectin. Now, what I will tell you that is extremely valuable is killing off the bad bugs naturally. It doesn't require medication. Now, if you're taking medicine for a parasite, it's got to be antiparasitic. If you're taking medication for bacteria, it's got to be an antibiotic. And if you're taking medication for yeast, it's got to be antifungal. When you use natural agents like berberine, oregano, thyme, clove, lemon balm, olive leaf extract, they are effective against yeast, bacteria, and parasites. And I'm gonna show you two things that I use in practice, candibactin AR and BR, that I use for SIBO as well as yeast overgrowth all day, every day. There is so much research behind this protocol. Look up Dr. Seebeck. She's a naturopathic doctor that did research comparing this protocol to using medications like Zyfaxin and Neomycin in the treatment of SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Another thing I do is I use this shake, Ultra GI Replenish. I personally take it. I give it to my daughter and I use it in my patients. It's very valuable for prebiotic growth, probiotic growth, leaky gut because it does contain glutamine. But we say leaky gut, what does that mean? How do we know we have leaky gut? The only way to know is to test zonulin, okay? And what we know is zonulin can be tested on a stool analysis. If the levels are high, you have leaky, leaky gut. If they're low, you don't. So leaky gut isn't this imaginary thing. There are tests for it. And what we do know is if your zonulin levels are high, your risk for developing autoimmune disease is also high. And if you already have an autoimmune disease, your risk for developing more autoimmune disease is already high, but it's even higher if you have high levels of zonulin. How does this all come together? Because 70% of our immune cells are in our gut. So if your gut isn't healthy, there's no way you're gonna be healthy. 
our brain hormones, our neurotransmitters, serotonin and dopamine and GABA. They're used by the brain, but they're made in the gut. And when you have chronic inflammation in your gut, you cannot absorb nutrients properly. I don't care how healthy your diet is. I don't care how many fancy, magnificent, sexy vitamins you take. You are not going to absorb them properly. You're going to be at a higher risk for nutrient deficiency. And you're going to be so frustrated. You're going to say, how can this be? I do everything right with my diet and my lifestyle because guess what? It starts in the gut. And the only reason I'm a self-proclaimed gut expert is because I suffered with these issues my entire life. And I went from doctor to doctor to doctor, taking medication after medication after medication, getting diagnosis after diagnosis and diagnosis, being told it's in my head, I have a nervous stomach. When I remember my mom being an advocate for my health when I was little, asking my doctors, is there any chance what she's eating could be hurting her stomach? And they said over and over, no, no, no. Come on, where's the common sense in that? It was foods that I was eating, but it was this bacteria that destroyed my gut. And guess what? Antibiotics killed the bacteria and it went away. But what those antibiotics did was they created more damage in my gut. And then I had to deal with not only H. pylori, but food allergies and food sensitivities and leaky gut. And that's a journey that I was on for about 10 years. And here I am again, full circle. I found out, again recently, I have H. pylori again. It's a bacteria. I was infected with it, right? And the symptoms that I had were stomach pain over a couple years. And here I am. I'm already gluten-free, dairy-free. I use enzymes. I use probiotics. What is going on here? So I found what was going on. I did a stool analysis, and I did have H. pylori. But here's one thing I also want you to know. My thyroid antibodies came back elevated for the first time ever. And we know H. pylori and a parasite called cryptosporidium can trigger Hashimoto's. My dad has thyroid disease, so it was no surprise. I've been anemic before. You know why I've been anemic? Not because I didn't eat iron-rich foods, not because of heavy bleeding or blood loss. I was anemic because of gut issues. I couldn't absorb iron properly because of gut issues. So what are symptoms of anemia? Fatigue, dark circles under the eyes, hair loss, breakage of the hair, your nails break. Those are also symptoms of thyroid and Hashimoto's. So here I'm thinking, gosh, I'm probably anemic again because I have H. pylori again, right? What ends up happening is I'm not anemic. All these symptoms that I'm experiencing came from elevated thyroid antibodies. So there is a cure when you get to the root cause. And to get to the root cause, you have to investigate. Yes, you can experiment with probiotics. You can experiment with certain diets, gluten-free, autoimmune paleo, paleo. You can experiment with those. You can experiment with supplementation and diet and lifestyle changes. But when you are doing the right things and you are not getting results, you have to find out why. And I have to say, finding out if you have dysbiosis and if you have leaky gut can take everything good you're doing in your life with diet, supplements, exercise, lifestyle, and make it that much more effective. Because when your gut is working against you, it's gonna require so much more time, energy, and money because you're spinning your wheels because you're up against this bad bug overgrowth. So find out if you have the bad bugs with the appropriate testing, get rid of them naturally and hopefully permanently, and then all the good you do can be more effective. Thank you very much. I always look forward to your questions and comments. Whatever questions you post, I will be happy to respond to. Have a great one.